Hey, everybody. Uh, my name, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Tim Shadone. I'm actually one of these uh, sales account specialists uh, here at Next Chapter. Really happy to have you guys on here uh, for our uh, Sally and Doc Creator webinar. Um, I'm actual, actually also going to be joined by uh, Damian Real as well, who is one of the managing directors of Product Workflow uh, at Fastcase also. So he'll be joining on my screen here in just a second, uh, just to kind of um, obviously make an introduction here uh, regarding this webinar. Um, how it's going to work is um, I'm going to invite Damien on here in just a second, um, where he's actually going to be going over a few different things. One, how the Sally fields uh, really work, as well as the LMS S uh, and how that can be tied into our doc creator. Um, and then he's also going to be talking about the larger scheme and the future of, of really where this is going uh, in the legal field um, as well. So, um, he'll be going over that, and then I'll actually be hopping in to Next Chapter um, just to show you guys how we can tie those Sally Fields um, into Next Chapter and then go ahead and tie those into our uh, Doc Creator feature as well. So, again, really happy to have everybody on. It looks like people are still uh, piling in. So, just to again kind of identify, you know, what it because I know a lot of people are, are still kind of trying to identify what exactly. Um, Sally as well as M LMSS means. Um, Sally is just the standards agreements uh, for the legal industry. And then you also have LMSS, which is our legal matter specification standard um, as well. So again, Damien's going to go into a little bit more detail um, on how it works, uh, you know, kind of where it's going here as well. So just give me one second. I'm actually going to invite Damien on the screen uh, for you guys. So just give me one sec. Uh, is that are you able to hear me now? Yep. Yep. All good. Excellent. It's uh, it's always a minor miracle whenever these things actually work out. Uh, <laughs> right. right. System. Oh, well, good. Well, thanks everyone for uh, for joining today, and thanks Tim for that introduction. Uh, so, uh, a bit more about my background. I've uh, been a lawyer since 2002. I litigated for a large law firm, Robbins Kaplan, doing uh, IP litigation and that kind of thing for about 15 years uh, before I jumped to the tech side. I was uh, I I've been a a lawyer since 2002, a coder since 1985. So, um, so part of that uh, is to be able to figure out how uh, software should be done better. So, after uh, working a bit for uh, for uh, uh, Thomson Reuters, I, I pitched Thomson Reuters. I said, "Here's a here's software that can build, change the world. You should build it and hire me." They were dumb enough to do that. Uh, I worked with uh, about 150 programmers. Uh, jumped from there to cybersecurity. Uh, where uh, my biggest thing was Facebook hired me and my company to investigate Cambridge Analytica. And then uh, I went from that really cool job to be able to uh, work here at Fastcase. Uh, and so I'm here actually wearing two hats. Uh, the first hat is, of course, with Fastcase, where I help uh, build the AI uh, behind Fastcase to be able to do some really cool things. Um, and my second hat is as Sally. Uh, so I'm uh, Sally is a nonprofit uh, that is able to able to take uh, three t genuine stakeholders in the legal ecosystem and be able to work together. Um, Sally is a way to be able to have uh, us all be able to speak together in literally the same language as I'm going to show you in a second here. So I'm verifying that I can actually share my screen. And if all is well with the world, you should now see the standard uh, legal data to fuel AI. Uh, so what I uh, what Sally is, is essentially a way to be able to get insights. Uh, so the LMSS is serving these three stakeholders I mentioned a bit ago. So uh, clients, uh, firms, which I would guess most uh, of the people on the call are with firms, and then vendors like Fastcase and Next Chapter, et cetera. So with each of these, uh, clients want to be able to say, which law firms are the best fit for me? And firms want to say, okay, which uh, we, we are the best fit, and this is how we can show that we are the best fit, and this is how we can do our work better. And then vendors want to help both of those make that happen. So when a client says, you know, which vendors have a pr experience in this area of law? Area of law is the Sally field. And then which providers have obtained this result? Granting summary judgment, uh, that's a Sally field. What's the cost to draft a document? We have lots of documents. In ju this jurisdiction, we have lots of jurisdictions. Each of these things in blue is a Sally field that we are able to be able to then run analytics on and be able to do things. 
And of course, as a law firm, you want to say, well, clients, we've done this many matters in this area of law, and we've gotten this number of results in this jurisdiction, and this uh, most to dismiss were this number. Um, again, each of these things in blue is a Sally field. And the reason that this is important is because the applications, uh, we need to be able to speak the same language uh, in e-billing, in research, uh, of course, in e-discovery, in document creation, legal project management, et cetera. So when you think about how do, how do I use these Sally fields, you could be able to use a field, uh, for example, shoplifting is a field in a Sally. So this is a, you can think of it like a tag. So this is a, it gets a criminal tag and this is a dispute on the criminal side. Um, so each of the matters gets a uh, Sally tag, Sally field, and then each of the documents can receive its Sally tag. So this is a transactional document that's mergers and acquisitions. Um, and then for timekeeping, you could even tag up your timekeeping to say, okay, this is an intellectual property patent matter that is a dispute. So it's patent litigation. So not just the document itself, but even within the document, and this is what we're going to be talking about with uh, next chapter, even within the document, you have items that are tagged up. So Sally has a field for directors and officers. It has a tag for exchange agent. It has a tag for a corporate organization. Each of these things is a Sally field or a Sally tag. Um, so then you could be able to think, okay, imagine that this is your document and then you're tagging this up in next chapter, for example, through the document creator to be able to say, okay, now I know that I have the standardized version of what is an exchange agent. I have a standardized version of what are broker's fees. And once you have that standardized versions of, in the litigation side, depositions or contracts or affidavits, um, you're able to do some really cool things uh, to be able to interoperate with vendors. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be showing you here. So if you say, okay, show me all of the, uh, there are three types uh, uh, aspects of Sally. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to jump to a different one for the sake of time. Uh, this is a this is a better. So if you're, what you might say, okay, I can name things. Uh, a motion to dismiss without actually having to uh, call it the Sally field for motion to dismiss, or I can you know, do the bankruptcy form number XYZ without doing the Sally bankruptcy form XYZ. Um, but this is where Sally really shines uh, because when clients need to communicate with law firms and law firms need to communicate with vendors, uh, that's where the Sally field, um, the current system breaks down, but the Sally really shines. So if a client says to a law firm, show me all of the banking law matters that we've done with you, um, they would then ask using one word for what the clients call banking law, which is a different word, this is today, which is a different word that, than the firms use for banking law, which is yet a different word for what the vendors call banking law. Each of them is calling banking law a different thing. So it's like a game of telephone where no one is actually saying the same uh, data language to be able to interoperate. So what Sally is doing is actually solving that problem to say, if you want banking law, use this uniform code, essentially this uniform uh, tag for that banking law so that we can all speak to each other and everyone agrees to what banking law is and we can push data back and forth. And not just one vendor uh, can be able to do that, but of course there's a whole ecosystem of vendors from Thompson Reuters to Fastcase uh, to uh, Next Chapter to Docket Alarm. Um, if everyone is calling banking law the same thing, you can in Next Chapter run a query to Docket Alarm saying, show me all the motions to dismiss. I know that in this document that I've created for docket uh, for next chapter, this document is a motion to dismiss for breach of contract in the Southern District of New York. I in next chapter know that. So run a query to docket alarm that has breaches of contract for motions, motions to dismiss in the Southern District of New York. And then you can get some good language. Um, because you're using the Sally Fields, you can actually run that query in a uniform way and be able to be much better. So you might say, okay, what, what actually has Sally counted at this point? And so the things that, uh, that Sally's counted are things like areas of law. What type of law are you performing? Um, one of those, I was an intellectual property lawyer, so I did patent law. But of course, uh, there is more than one type of thing that patent law does. Uh, I can be a patent prosecutor that actually files it with the Patent and Trademark Office, or I can be a patent litigator where I dispute patents. And so that's where areas of law, uh, I think Sally in a very smart way has separated the area of law, patent law, with the service I as a lawyer provide in that area of law. So within that, I can be a patent litigator or I can be a patent prosecutor uh, to do it regulatorily with the US Patent and Trademark Office. So in this way, um, you can be able to imagine that if it's a patent a litigation, uh, patent litigation, I could say that's a dispute for patent law. That's how I would tag it up. Um, not just that, but we go very deeply 
For example, negligent misrepresentation is a thing that we count. Um, and so uh, you can see that there's all sorts of causes of action. Here are all of my civil claims, which include, uh, you can see that there's uh, all sorts of misrepresentation claims um, and our negligence claims. If you do slip and falls, uh, we have lots and lots of malpractice uh, all the way down to medical malpractice. If you have want endocrinology malpractice, you're able to do that. Each one of these things is has a is a Sally Field uh, that has this unique identifier that uh, that we on the back end uh, next chapter whenever uh, they if you select endocrinology malpractice you're able to uh, in the back end say okay that gets this tag and the beauty is once it gets this tag you can run a query to say doc, uh, to Fastcase or to Docket Alarm to say show me all of your endocrine mal uh, endocrinology malpractice documents and we'll give you back the endocrinology malpractice documents if you have this IRI. So hopefully you're able to see a bit about now, oh, okay, I understand. So uh, a motion to dismiss is a thing. Negligent misrepresentation is a thing. Um, so I'm going to say, be able to say, okay, show me all the motions to dismiss uh, for, for that. So if I do a motion to dismiss, um, I can pull that up here. Okay, show me all the motions to dismiss for endocrinology uh, malpractice. And then it, we could show all the motions to dismiss for endocrinology malpractice. Um, if you created your own tag that is not a Sally tag for endocrinology malpractice, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that kind of uh, uh, efficient query to be able to uh, interoperate with one another. So that is a, a very whirlwind uh, tour of uh, what I think the power, and, and I've just shown you just the very tip of the iceberg as far as the, um, the, uh, the areas of law the service I provide, um, and of course, within uh, within uh, litigation practice, you might also have uh, different courts. So if you do New York, for example, uh, you can also have all the venues. So if we do uh, New York City Civil Court, for example, um, that is a thing that we count. And you can see that we've gone very deeply uh, as far as all the district courts, um, all the Supreme Courts, uh, both on the appellate division and all the way down to Monroe County, Nassau County, et cetera. So um, we have 3,700 jurisdictions uh, in the courts. We have uh, several hundred, I think more than a thousand causes of action uh, on, the, um, on the claim types. We have uh, hundreds and hundreds of litigation documents. Um, we have uh, also many uh, transactional documents, whether they be agreements or last will and testament or mergers and acquisitions. Um, the total number of Sally Fields that we've created at this point is 9,700 or over 9,700 uh, under all of these. Um, so that is a, a, a huge increase. If you've heard about Sally in the past, uh, two years ago, we only had 1,500. Uh, but when I joined, I expanded that from 1,500 to 9,700. Um, so I've been building this out slowly but surely to be able to find uh, essentially the grand, <laughs> I see this as the grand uh, unified structure of the law, grand unified theory of the law, um, where if there is a something that matters both substantively, whether I win or lose, or whether I get the deal done, or in the business of law, how much will this thing cost? Um, I think we've counted it in this, uh, this 9,700 things. Um, so I think, uh, Tim, this might be a good segue to be able to say, okay, now that I've seen at least the background of, uh, of the, uh, the LMSS uh, within Sally, uh, how can I use that within next chapter? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to also get my screen up just so you guys are able to see everything. Okay, I hope everybody is able to uh, perfectly see my screen here. Um, so first things first, when you are in Next Chapter um, and you are um, logged in and everything, obviously you're on your home screen here. But when you're actually looking to create these uh, custom fields or create any sort of uh, Sally fields, uh, you actually do want to go over into uh, your firm's name, come up into your account settings here. Under your free firm defaults here is where you're going to start to create these custom fields. You're going to see under um, the firm defaults, you're going to have a custom field step. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into my custom field tag. Obviously, up at the top is where you can really come in and, and uh, go through your different practice areas, choose which practice area you are uh, focused in here um, so that you can have that. Um, now, I have a, custom, a couple custom fields already in here, but I'm going to show you guys how to uh, create those, get those saved. That way, again, when you open up an immigration case, 
all these custom fields are going to automatically pull in there where you just have to fill in the data um, here as well. So just to get things started, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new field. Um, I'm going to confirm it in immigration. Now, I'm going to have a few different field types here uh, that I am able to come in and choose from. Um, so let's say, uh, for instance, I want to go ahead and pull my you know, attorney flat fee um, into um, as a custom field that I can pull into specific documents. Um, one, there's a couple different ways that you can choose from um, Sally. Um, you can go ahead and click the link, which is select field, which will actually bring you in to these existing fields uh, where you can toggle through all the folders um, and find those. You're also going to have a search key up here where you can search those specific terms as well to easily find those or find something that you are specifically looking for um, as well. Now, what you can also do is you can have the under the create your own. Um, when you come in here and look up a field name, again, let's say I did want to come in and turn or uh, and do an attorney fee. Um, I can come in here and go ahead and search attorney and then fee here. And you're going to actually see that existing term come up from Sally. So what I can do is just go ahead and hit the attorney's fees. Awesome. Now that one is set. It's going to be in a currency field. So all I have to do is plug in the number and it'll automatically pull it into a specific currency, right? So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. Now that comes up. If you want to see what it is going to look like, you can always come in, you know, preview if you want to see, you know, what the number exactly is going to look like in there as well. Um, a couple other fields um, that I am going to create just to pull into my document. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do another one that is going to be um, a text field. And let's say I want to identify, you know, what the project plan is. Um, is going to be for this case, right? So again, I'm going to come in and search project plan here. And I have, again, another following existing term in here where I can just select project plan, cool, save and close. Now that one's going to be in here. Um, let's say for this one, I am going to do, uh, I'm going to bring the document example is going to be a flat fee agreement um, that you can choose from. So obviously I'm going to need um, an actual due date for that flat fee agreement. So next I'm going to actually come in and do a date and time field uh, as well. Again, can come in and search uh, the specific due date. So I'm just going to go, you know, invoice do, and then you're going to see again, these existing terms that are already coming up that I can just choose, save and close. Right. So now that I have these fields set, let's say this is all I'm going to need in my uh, specific document. Uh, what I'm now able to do is now I want to go ahead and um, access that case. Right. So I can fill in all that information. So I'm going to come into uh, my case up here that is an immigration case. Um, I'm going to hop into Rob Stark. Once I am in that case, I'm going to come into my case dashboard. You are going to see a, another field down here that is going to say custom fields. Again, this is where you're gonna actually start to come in and fill out the data, right? So let's say for my attorney's fee, you know, I'm gonna do 1200. Uh, the project plan is, you know, approve um, application. Uh, for citizenship. Right, so now I have that in there. This is what, exactly what is gonna be uh, pulled into my document. Uh, as well. So everything when I pull in these tags is going to pull in what information I have in this specific case. So let's say for the inv uh, invoice due date, I'll be sending this invoice out today. So we'll give them, you know, 10 days um, and do it on uh, the 24th here, right? And we can even set a specific time uh, to be more obviously upfront with them. So let's say, you know, I want to do uh, 530, you know, just the end of the workday here that they'll have uh, to get it in. So I do it until 530. Um, now, once what once I have these custom fields created, what I am able to do is I'm going to actually come back into my account settings to create these specific templates that I do have. Right. So I come into my firm defaults again. And again, these doc creator, this is these are creating templates so that you don't have to come in for every immigration case and do a whole nother flat fee agreement. Right. So what I'm going to do, um, obviously, to start is I'm just going to come in and open this up. And let's say this is going to be my general document uh, that I do have. Um, so I have my general document in um, next chapter for my flat fee agreement, right? So as you can see, I have these outlined just so you guys can see where I'm going to pull these in. Um, but you're also going to have your tag glossaries over here. 
So the attorney's fees that I just created is going to be in blue because it's a custom field. So, you know, that's already a custom field. We do have preset fields um, already in here as well. Those are going to be in gray just in case, you know, obviously for specific documents, you do need to pull those in. So what I'm going to start with here is obviously I'm going to just come in and I want to pull in the firm name, uh, my firm name. So I'm just going to come in, search up full name here. Now I can just grab this and put it exactly where I want under firm name. Cool. Now I can just go ahead and delete this out and have that now in my document. Again, this is now going to pull in my firm name directly into this document. And again, it's a template, so I don't have to do this, you know, over and over again um, in order to have it created. Um, so another thing that you are able to do, let's say you have obviously specific or uh, multiple, you know, firm name um, tags that you want to pull in. You can actually just go ahead and copy and then just keep pasting these in here um, rather than having to go in and pull it directly from there every single time. Um, so you'll have that. We got another one here. We can just keep pulling them in directly into this document. And again, you'll see how everything's pulled in uh, directly in here as well once I do open this up. Um, perfect. So one last one here. And we have our firm names in there. Um, perfect. So let's say, again, I do want to more hop, hop into the uh, Sally created fields that I did create. Right. So the first one I'm going to do, obviously, is at the top, and that's going to be our project plan here. Um, so what I'm going to do again, it's very easy to search for the tags. Obviously there's a long list of tags in here, uh, but you can easily just, okay, I know exactly what I listed this tag ad tag as, or what Sally has listed. So all I need to do is hop into project plan and I can go ahead and again, just pull that into the document, delete out that. And now this is going to be created in there as well. So now that I have the project plan in, I can do this again for all of these. So I'm just going to kind of run through that really quick. So I want the attorney fees. I want that to be pulled in here. Perfect. Uh, I want my non-refundable clause that I add. That pulled in as well. Um, Perfect. And then obviously that payment due date that I had in there as well. So all I have to do, oops, sorry, the invoice due date is what I have it listed as. So I go ahead and put the invoice due date in there as well. Now that is created. And again, these tabs, oops, did not mean to do that. And then now I can delete this. And this is all this information is pulled in there. Let's say, you know, I'm going to have be having this client pay directly online, or I have a some sort of online payment uh, link that they can visit. Again, I created that a little bit earlier, but um, I can actually come in and just drag in that direct link in here. The nice part is, is let's say you have that link created. Uh, because we have all of these, um, these editing tools within our doc creator, you can literally just link it directly right through here. So we'll just link, and then we can type in the URL as, you know, um, next chapter legal dot uh, com slash things so now we have that in there go ahead and approve it now that is directly linked uh in there as well so now what i probably want to do is make sure everything is being pulled in correctly for that uh case specifically um just so you know i don't have to come back in here you know redo all this as well so what i am able to do now from the stock creator is go ahead and preview this document I can come in preview and then it's going to show me my specific cases that I have. So I can go ahead and pull in Rob Stark's information, open this up. And this document has been created for me uh, with those merge tag. I've got my firm name in there. I've got my fee in there. I'm going to have my, um, my non-refundable uh, clause in there. I'll also have the payment due date as well. And then again, you see the firm names, the link is in there as well for you to click on um, also. So, you have those that information all pulled into this document for you. And again, that's just a very small, small percentage of what Sally can do uh, for your guys' law firm um, here as well. So now what I can do is obviously I can save that document. Once that document is saved, again, I've created now this template for all my cases moving forward. So now if I were to hop into any other case that I wanted to for immigration, Again, I'll just use Rob for an example. I can come into my case, go into Doc Creator, select my template directly, and here is my flat fee agreement that will generate that document for me uh, as well. Um, once that document is ge generated, you have 
a bunch of different things that you can do. Obviously, if you just want to download it directly to your desktop or you want to save it to a specific client folder um, that you have, you can come in here, hit export. This will actually uh, make it a PDF document specifically, and you are now able to come in and you can download it uh, directly again so you can have it on file for you guys, or you can save it to our client document storage. Uh, with And within all areas of law, you do get unlimited document storage. So uh, with next chapter, so if I were to save it to my client document storage, I'm actually able to go back into my client document storage here, and I'm gonna have that custom document Flaffy agreement directly through here as well. So that's just, again, a small example of what you guys are able to do with those Sally tags, um, you know, obviously creating those tags and then pulling those into specific documents here. Uh, I know we did want to uh, do a Q&A with you guys uh, here as well. So um, if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to go ahead and throw those in the chat down there. There's also an ask question tab uh, also and. Damien and I can definitely do uh, as best we can to answer those questions for you. We'll stay live here for at least the next couple of minutes. That's true. And I've actually, I, as we're gathering those questions, I think I'm going to mm -hmm. share my screen one more time and be yeah. able to show uh, show a bit. Uh, how does one share on this platform? I did it before. There we are. Uh, so within uh, with uh, one of the cool parts about uh, now that we've shown how you've created a document, um, say one of the fields that you've created is defendant, uh, and then another is a motion to dismiss the claim. Um, each of these is a Sally field. So the beauty is that uh, if you are also a, uh, uh, a docket alarm member, we are also collecting those things on the docket alarm side. So here you can see a particular docket. Uh, docket. So this is a case within docket alarm. Um, so if you are doing a motion for summary judgment, for example, um, you can see here that this is a motion for summary judgment filed in this case. And you can see here this Sally LMSS. So you can see that motion for summary judgment is recognized using the same language within the uh, Sally side as it is within the next chapter side. Uh, so if I want to create a motion for summary judgment, I create a summary judgment here. And that's uh, it's going to say, oh, that's motion for summary judgment. Um, so this LMSS is the same uh, with the next chapter. It's the same as Dr. Alarm's LMSS. So you could say, okay, show me all of the motions for summary judgments in the Southern District of New York uh, amongst Dr. Alarm's 500 million documents. Um, and then you'll be able to find all the motions for summary judgment uh, in my jurisdiction, maybe before my judge. Um, so you can see kind of that's a bit of the power of being able to use Sally. And you could use that same query to say, okay, show that uh, within Clio, <laughs> show me all of my motions for summary judgment within Thomson Reuters, within Lexis. Um, since Lexis and Thomson Reuters and uh, all of these uh, you see on your screen here, Thomson Reuters, Lexis, Fast Case, of course, Dr. Alarm, Next Chapter, all under the same umbrella. I manage, Intap, Elevate, Rain and Court, and a whole bunch of others are all using the same language to be able to interoperate. Um, you could see, uh, you know, if you have the choice between I'm going to go it alone and not going to go with Sally, or I'm going to go with what all these companies are calling summary judgment. Um, of course, it makes sense to be able to say, okay, I'm going to use the taxonomy that that Sally has created, so that I can uh, essentially pull data more easily from all of these companies, including, of course, we hope that you pull it from Next Chapter first and Dr. Alarm and Fastcase. So that's a that's at least a, a little more background as to uh, why Sally is important uh, and how you might not want to go it alone. Um, and this one more thing is that you might be tempted to be able to say, okay, I'm going to enter my own thing. Uh, I see cash is here. Uh, that that's cash is a thing I care about, uh, but I'm going to go uh, go to loan and not pick the Sally field and do cash like, right? Um, you could do that, uh, I guess. Uh, but the tricky part is then now you can't do the, any of the interoperability parts, right? You're uh, you're going to essentially be an island of yourself, and you won't be able to get the cool integration uh, that if you had picked uh, cash from the Sally field. Um, one, it's easier, and two, it actually makes uh, your life easier down the road. Uh, Tim, do we want to start answering questions? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so uh, I can, I, I know I answered it just a second, but I know you said, can you dial it in um, to a sp particular state um, as far as documents go? I mean, you can upload anything from a particular state. Uh, it just really depends on, all right, can I get this in, you know, a Word document or can I have it in Google Docs or is this something that I'm going to have to manually go in and type out the entire document. 
Uh, really just depends. Right now, I know with ours, it works best if you do copy and paste it from a Google Doc, um, just because we we share the same technology. So it comes in really smoothly. You aren't going to have to make, you know, um, entire, not entire edits, but small edits like you would with a Word document if you were to upload it um, as well. Um, another one there, does it integrate with Clio? Just really quick. We do not have a direct integration right now with Clio um, as far as next chapter goes. Um, I know that is something obviously that we're always talking about how we can go in and enhance that integration. So I know at the moment we do not have it directly integrated with them, but again, could be something that we are looking at down the line. And also Clio uh, has expressed interest in uh, in uh, Sally. Uh, so to the extent that you make your Sally fields uh, in, integrate, then of course that uh, would be more likely to integrate with Clio. Yep, yep. Um, and I don't know if you saw Damien Heathers. It uh, looks like you might be able to answer this one better than me, but she was just asking how it can be used you know, particularly with bankruptcy cases. Sure. Uh, so you can imagine uh, uh, several use cases. One is just you know the fee agreement with your client. Of course, that uh, that's with not necessarily bankruptcy specific, but that's with any case you could do fee agreements. So we'll call that the business uh, documents. You could do it that way. Uh, you could also do, of course, form based. Uh, next chapter already has many form based you know bankruptcy forms. Uh, but to the extent there is a form that you need that is not in next chapter, I, I, I don't even know if that exists. But if there were hypothetically a, a document that weren't in there, you'd be able to create a bankruptcy bankruptcy form in that. Um, and of course, if you had adversary proceedings, uh, you're going to be you know, creating uh, you know, essentially motion briefs and that kind of thing. So for adversary proceedings, uh, this would be um, you know, kind of a, a builder of documents, uh, some of which are forms uh, and some of which are you know, free, freely created fields. Um, all of those things could be created within bankruptcy cases. Uh, there's probably several other use cases, uh, but essentially any document that you can create within the context of a bankruptcy case, uh, you'd be able to create here and save here. Perfect. Uh, looks like we had another one. Can the documents be exported to Word instead of PDF? As of right now, it's just being able to be exported into PDF um, at the moment, just with um, how our software works in exporting those documents. Um, once it is obviously exported, once it's exported in a PDF, again, you can completely download that directly to your desktop. Or, you know, if you have a client folder that you want it saved in, that can be put directly in there. And then again, you can go ahead and tie it directly into our client document storage. You know, if you didn't want to take up, uh, you know, a bunch of storage on your computer, you do not have to technically put it directly into your computer, you can go ahead and tie it into our client document storage. Uh, and, to give a, and to give a little background as to why that is, you might say, oh gosh, I would love to be able to do it in Word. Um, you could imagine, okay, so you're drafting something in the browser, right? And then if you decide, okay, I'm going to download it in Word, um, and then while it's on your desktop, you realize, oh gosh, I actually wanted to add this language. And so you start adding the language on your desktop. Um, that's not saved up in the cloud anymore. Uh, so then you all of a sudden have an orphan document that isn't uh, the, the master agreement. Uh, and then you might say, well, okay, well, then I could just upload that Word document back up into the cloud, right? That might be an answer. But the problem is that Word um, does not allow you to really sense a diff uh, between what you created on your desktop, what you changed on your desktop, and then to be able to integrate that back into the master in the cloud. Um, Microsoft makes that very, very difficult uh, to be able to do that. Um, so anyway, so that, uh, that kind of round trip to download it into Word and then to push it back in Word, um, that is a uh, very hard technological problem that Microsoft has made it really, really difficult to do. So um, so if you uh, want to think about it, uh, the, the cloud based within Next Chapter is essentially your editor. And so the, the PDF is really an export rather than as something you can be able to edit later on. I think of it like Google Docs. Yeah, perfect. Um... Were there any more questions? Anything else? We can obviously stay in for a couple more, couple more minutes. Um, obviously, I have some sign off things to say as well. Just as far as you know, if you weren't, or if you have somebody that wants to um, go ahead and attend this um, again, um, this is a pre recorded webinar. It will be uploaded as soon as we end it. So uh, just follow the same exact link, um, and you will be able to access this webinar and obviously reach out to us with any questions that you do have regarding the tool regarding Sally, anything in particular, we are able to go in and, and do that as well. And it looks uh, like Sally had a follow-up question saying, so you yep. can go back and edit in the cloud and then export again. And that's exactly right. So yeah, edit. think about editing in the cloud, just export when you want to print out or be able to do things. But yeah, the, all of the editing happens in the cloud. That's exactly right, Kathy. Any more questions in particular?
give you guys a few minutes to ask any questions that you guys do want regarding the tool or really anything that we just showed in general. As a uh, my undergraduate degree is in education before I went to law school, so uh, that I've been was told as an educator you need to wait an unreasonably long time right. uh, in awkward silence uh, to be able to give <laughs> everyone an opportunity to ask questions. Right, right, right. Hmm. Find a replace, uh, Tim. Do you? I, I think that find a replace is not yet a feature, is it? Correct. No, it is. It is not particularly in next chapter. No. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm sure, again, we're always taking feedback for, hey, how can we make this better? Um, what can we do here? So we are able to, um, you know, go in and, and take that feedback. And, you know, if it is something that, you know, we feel that we need to actually implement, we can always end up doing that in the future. Great. Uh, looks like we have a question from Scott asking, are Sally Fields proprietary? And thankfully, I will say no, absolutely not. They are not proprietary. They are open source. Uh, so what you see on your screen here is a Stanford tool called Web Protege. Um, it is free and open. As I said earlier, uh, Sally is a nonprofit. Uh, so we are a nonprofit that has every one of these things as an open source tool. Um, so if you wanted to, you could go, uh, I could, uh, if you're interested in getting a login, I could give you a login. You could actually download the entirety of uh, the entire uh, 9,700 of them in XML to the extent how nerdy you are. I'm certainly that nerdy enough to be able to dig into the XML. I don't know how many of our 60 attendees are, uh, but you could be able to download them, uh, the XML and be able to use them for however you'd like. Um, so yes, uh, they are all open source. And uh, that's the reason that we're getting such good uptake from all of these folks, uh, because it's free. And uh, and we've heard from uh, people that, uh, especially within Thomson Reuters and uh, other people in the know, they said, this is, this is an amazing feat that we've done to be able to uh, essentially capture uh, almost all of the things that matter. And we're building every day. We add about uh, hundreds of them every month, um, uh, hundreds of new things. So at any rate, so they are not uh, proprietary. Uh, they are open source to answer Scott's question. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, somebody says, I, I don't look, I, I don't know if it's uh, not that nerdy as far as uh, XML is not that nerdy or I don't look that nerdy. Uh, either way, thanks for that, uh, Scott. <laughs> uh, and you don't need a login to do it. That's that's right. If you um, if you do want to go to sally.org, S-A-L-I.org. And um, as an aside, I, I'm sad to say it took me about a year to be within Sally to realize that every one of the things that I've, uh, I'm showing on the screen uh, a bit uh, right here, each one of these is a Sally Field. Uh, so anyone who knows the actress Sally Field would know that uh, they like me. They really like me. Um, so anyway, so if you go to the Sally website, uh, you can be able to see uh, the, I think it's in under using the LMSS or actually it's right here. So it's on the Sally website. You say review the LMSS on Web Protege. Um, it has instructions to be able to say, um, here's the generic uh, user is Sally user and Sally LMSS. So for example, I go to the incognito window. Um, I do Sally uh, user, Sally user, Sally LMSS, L-I-L-M-S-S. -S. Um, I'm able to access all of the release candidates uh, and version one. So at any rate, so uh, yes, it's free to, uh, you don't need to create a login to do it. You can just use these logins right here on sally.org. Uh, and of course, or you could just browse the next chapter tool uh, and you can find them all uh, right here. And uh, and one more thing that, uh, so you can browse here. Um, one thing that Tim didn't uh, mention is that if I wanted to do, for example, dismiss, um, if you type dismiss up here, uh, it's really smart that it shows all of the dismiss anywhere in here. Um, so if you have a maritime, for example. Um, you made it look like your screen went away. Oh, interesting. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, so yeah. now, excellent. So if I, so uh, I'll do it again so that you can see. So if you do the select field from LMSS here, um, you're, you can see that if I start typing maritime, if you have a maritime case, uh, for example, it'll go through all 9,700 and say, yes, the area of law is admiralty and maritime law. And I might want to do a maritime lien and I might want to file it in front of the maritime administration as part of the transfer uh, that and the federal maritime commission. And just maritime negligence is a thing uh, and maritime liens are a thing. 
Um, so at any rate, uh, you're able to quickly go through in, an, uh, frankly, an even better way uh, within Next Chapter than within the <laughs> within the tool uh, that is uh, that is the Stanford tool. Uh, the Stanford tool, I've been looking for a good way to be able to do what you're seeing on your screen right here, but sadly, it's not available. So, um, so yeah, so it's uh, if you have a negligence, uh, you can see all of the negligence things within Sally. Um, it's really amazing uh, negligence, and I hit enter. please sugar on top of course oh there we are negligence so you can see you know maritime negligence is a thing um and so yeah it's this is frankly an even better way to explore it uh than within uh within the web protege tool where i i can just search for maritime negligence um maritime negligence um and i can see that it's a thing uh, but I can't see it in the context of each of its parents and grandparents and grand grandparents. Uh, so anyway, so that's a uh, that is that. Uh, any other questions or any other thoughts on either Sally or the cool document creator tool that Next Chapter has? I don't know if anyone has ever uh, complained about uh, something going too short, uh, but uh, Tim, just, should we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, again, thank you guys all for attending. Obviously, if you guys do have specific questions or anything, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw our email in there. Um, you know, if you do have specific questions, want a demo, uh, a separate demo, one-on-one -on -one demo with myself or uh, my other colleague, Alex, we are definitely happy to give those to you uh, to get more nitty gritty. Um, obviously, it helps out too when you guys, you know, if we do hop on a demo to honestly pass us a pass us a document that you guys use. Um, you know, we'd love to actually upload it in, show you how you guys can use that document uh, within our doc creator um, as well. So again, feel free to um, contact us at any time. We'd love to talk to you a little bit more. Um, we also will be shooting for, you know, the bank bankruptcy specific attorneys out there. We will be shooting, shooting another webinar tomorrow, actually going over, uh, how you can tie in your bankruptcy notices as well as our, uh, calendar integration, um, with your firm as well. So feel free to, again, uh, reach out to us and, and, and contact us wherever just real quick. One last question. How do you get the document to us? Uh, feel free to email it to sales at next chapter. Uh, I'm sorry, I put that email wrong. It's sales at next chapter BK. Um, always get that wrong. Um, but if you just go ahead and send it to us via sales at next chapter uh, BK.com, um, we can definitely go ahead and um, also um, just play around with it. You might just have to give us a little time to play around with the document and getting it in there, but um, we'll be able to get it in there for you. Obviously, we can walk you through that, how we did it. Um, as well. But again, feel free to send those documents to sales at nextchapterbk.com. Um, perfect. Well, again, thanks, Damien. Appreciate all the knowledge um, on all everything um, there. Obviously, happy to have you here um, as well to show us a little bit more and, and you know, be more, more informative on these salad fields where it's going and everything. So again, appreciate all the attendees as well. And uh, again, contact us if you guys do have any questions. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.